Hi, I'm Kevin Hill, and we're here at the San Benito Southern Railroad in Hollister, California today. And uh, I have a Bachman 38 uh, ton shea that I'd like to put DCC in, but I've never done one of these installs before, so I thought I'd call in somebody that uh, has some experience installing DCC. Hi, I'm John, and you know who I am because you're watching my channel. Kevin called me one day and said, hey, can you help me with the DCC installation? And I thought to myself, well, I've installed a few things now into some HO and N scale stuff. And then he told me it was a garden scale shea, and I thought, okay, I haven't done anything like that before, so I thought I'd better get some more professional help. Well, apparently I'm a professional. I'm really excited. You're a professional compared to us. I'm wearing my professional looking glasses. But anyway, uh, He's, oh. He looked smart with the glasses on. Hold on. There. Now we're all smart. Yeah, it makes me look smarter. Anyway, but uh, I'm Trevor Park from the Fern Creek and Western, and uh, you may remember me from the battery install videos and all the videos we've done over at Fern Creek. But uh, I have done a couple of shays now uh, as battery conversions, and that'll actually make DCC a whole lot easier because when you're converting an engine to battery, you are inherently converting it to DCC, but just with internal power instead of external power. So uh, this will actually be a lot easier than a battery conversion, a lot less space required and just putting a DCC decoder in. Uh, so let's dig into the model and start the conversion. Alright, so here are most of the parts that we need. This engine is going to get a uh, one of the new Soundtrack Tsunami 2 decoders installed into it with Steam Sound. So there's the Tsunami 2 right in there. I've used a couple of these on the Fern Creek and Western and they are great. I mean, uh, Tsunami used to only produce decoders up to one amp, but these go up to four amps and so they're great for large scale equipment. And uh, sounds the new sounds are just incredible. Since we're doing this DCC and not battery, there's this little guy here, which is a Soundtrack's current keeper. Uh, and this uh, is basically a bank of capacitors that uh, keeps the current going if it hits dirty track or a section where there's no power, and it'll keep the engine on this size maybe going for a couple seconds over dirty track. Um, we also have a fairly good sized speaker in here. Uh, for the local folks, they do not come stock with speakers. Some Bachman engines do, but uh, these ones don't. We have some extra wire here. Uh, now. I'm going to get bad rap because I'm not using NMRA color-coded wire. You how remember, dare you? How dare me. Right? The Bachman engines generally do not follow NMRA color coding. Well, how dare they? Uh, how dare they? Yeah, that's made it uh, a little difficult during some of the conversions. And as a matter of fact, some of the older engines, um, maybe this vintage, I've never actually had a 38 ton specifically apart. I've had the 36 ton and the three truck shea apart, which are the two sister engines to this one. But the older engines, like the 36 ton, for instance, um, there's no color coding whatsoever in the engine. It's all black wires. Um, so I had to have the whole engine apart and track all the wires with the voltmeter to figure out what was going on in there. Uh, so hopefully this one's not like that. That'll make the conversion a bit of a, um, a pain in the you-know-what. It'll uh, be a little easier if it's coded, yeah, huh? Uh, if, it's, if it's got any color coding of any sort, it'll be nice. I don't know. Kevin, I got five bucks that says it's not color coded. I don't know because they how, they uh, how new is they it? advertise this as DCC ready. So. If they advertise it as DCC okay. ready, then I think I, I'm going to put my money on this. There's going to oh. put my money. There's going to be color coding. I don't have five bucks. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to put. Yeah, John, come on, pay up. Yeah. No, you didn't open it yet, but I, I, I'm to, retracting. Everybody needs to subscribe to Channel Two so that he can have five dollars to pay to Trevor. Pay Trevor that's right. Wow. Yeah. yeah. Oh, Good. thank you. Speaking Good. of that. <laughs> Oh, nice, <laughs> nice subtle. Uh, yeah. yeah, but I like this though because this is. I, I'm hanging out with guys that actually watch my. <laughs> 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 Sorry, go ahead. It's, uh, it's, it's. Listen, you know, there's more stuff going on off camera that's even funnier than what you're hearing. So. Yeah, it's just not. It's know, raunchy. It's raunchy. I'm not wearing pants right now. <laughs> <laughs> I have no comment. I don't want to know. <laughs> and I'm going to keep my keep the camera off off Kevin for now, just in case it's true. <laughs> Keeping my eyes on the shay. Keeping my eyes on the shay. We also have a soldering iron here for tinning the wires. Uh, one of the nice things about this Tsunami decoder is that 
Um, it has a, a screw terminal bank on it, so you can just put the wires in and screw the terminal down and not actually have to solder directly to the decoder. Uh, but I still like to tin the wires, it's a good idea. And then we just have our sorted various tools, uh, you know, solder, flux, um, wire nippers, needle nose pliers, screwdrivers, that sort of thing. But then we also need some um, resistors. Um, the ones that this engine uses for the Bachmann headlights, at least that I've been using when I do battery conversions, are quarter watt 820 ohm resistors. Um, and uh, those seem to work really well for the Bachmann LEDs. Uh, you do need resistors if you're going to rip the factory light board out, which in this case we will, because there's not enough room for everything. And the factory light board also generally uh, has other issues going on for it, like you can't do independent lighting necessarily of things, and it's just, it's not worth keeping it in. Just rip it out. And then the last thing, uh, just to cover up any connections we might make with the resistors or the speaker, we do have a liquid electrical type tried and true uh, for making, uh, putting the little rubber over the connection so you don't have to use heat shrink tubing, which is nice. So the first step to get the tender off is to take this end ladder off. Uh, you can also take the sand tanks off, that requires slipping the engine un over and uh, taking the screws out from the underside. Um, you need one of them to come off in order for it to be able to clear for the tender to come off. So we'll just take the end ladder off. And it just comes off pretty easily like that. We'll set that over here. And then um, the only screw you need to remove to get the tender off is underneath the water hatch, not the oil fill hatch, but the water hatch. Take this little pair of tweezers in, just take the water hatch off. Uh, there's a Phillips head screw down there, you see a Phillips head screwdriver, and stick it down there and unscrew it. And then the tender just comes right off. And we get to see what's on the underside. Oh boy. Well, I can already tell you something good. Um, is that I see four wires coming up from the trucks, which means it is DCC ready, which is really nice. Right, and one of the things that we were talking about, Kevin and I were talking about, because I knew that the, the motors were on the trucks, and we were talking about that. How are we going to isolate the power? Because it's right on the motor that is right on the truck. So didn't know that this whole DCC th yeah. ready thing existed. So it, cool. it's like the 55 ton chase, the three truck chase in that sense. Um, so this is going to be a lot easier. So while the wires in the engine themselves, some of them don't follow um, NMRI color coding. Um, some of them do, some of them don't. Um, Bachman kind of used some, somewhat of their own convention with this thing. The nice thing though is that the actual light board is labeled. You know, it'll say uh, motor plus, motor minus, track, uh, track right, track left, speaker, whatever. You know, it's labeled. So what we do is when we um, take the light board out, we're going to clip the wires individually. And the ones we need, uh, we're going to strip and tin them and then um, plug them into the Tsunami 2 decoder. And uh, we'll do that as we go along until we have all the wires cut and then we can unscrew this board and attach the Tsunami 2 to this nice little platform that's in place. Um, when you do the battery conversions on these, you generally have to take this platform out because there's not enough room in the engine. But the nice thing is we get to keep this because um, the new speaker, in theory, should fit underneath it. It's going to be a real tight fit, but it should fit underneath it. And uh, then we can just attach the board directly to this nice little platform here and make it all clean. But if worst comes to worst, you can always just take that piece of double-sided stick tape and attach it to the top of the speaker there and um, uh, mount the board that way. So that would create a new platform, basically? Exactly. So, um, and that doesn't affect the sound of the speaker? No, it doesn't. It, it shouldn't. Um, especially if you use the double-sided foam tape, which is what you want. It, it would insulate nice, it. It insulates right. it. It puts a nice layer in between that. Makes um, sense. So um, the next step is to start using our wire clippers. And we're going to, some of these are screw terminals. So for those, you just unscrew the little terminal, take the wire out and tin it, put it in the Tsunami decoder. But a lot of these are soldered directly to the light board. So we'll clip those, strip them, and then tin it. And so you basically just have to know how to read the board labels. It's pretty straightforward. And you can find wiring diagrams online for these. Uh, the locomotives come with them. Um, but the nice thing is that um, the board is labeled so we can actually see what's going on. Um, and some of the wires we're not going to use. We're only going to be using the lights the motor, the speaker, and the track power wires. And so we'll just cut those, tin them, put them in the Tsunami decoder, and just read your manual for your Tsunami decoder, and you'll know where to put them. And so we'll just keep going along the line and doing it as we go. Is the idea to do them one at a time so you don't lose track of what, which one you're working on? Right, so yeah. you, you can do it in the way that you just clip them and label them. Um, when we did the other... Uh, 55 ton shea conversion, the three truck shea battery conversion, that's how we did it. 
But that was because you were tracing where the wires went. Exactly. Though, right? Yeah. But since we aren't going to be having a real not rat's nest of wires in here with battery conversion stuff, um, I think we can just clip them one at a time and do it that way. Cool. It'll be easier. So we'll clamp the two wires in our little helping hands, make sure they're twisted together, and then take a little bit of flux. As a matter of fact, we can just use um, tweezers. With a little Put a little blob flux. on there? Yes, it doesn't need to be pretty. There we go. And, and just so people know, the flux kind of gives the solder a path, right? It, it, it's right. almost like it sucks it onto the wires. Yeah, it's so really cool. There you go. Watch this. And there you go. You have tinned wires. And then just unclip it. And see, they're stuck together. Yeah. And then you just take your tsunami decoder, and we got motor plus over here. And you just stick it in the hole. Tin the wire together so you can get them both in the same hole for hey, look at that. penetration. Look at that. I didn't have to clip that one, it just came off. Nice. Your back motor lead. Quality. Quality control here at Blockman Trains. So I've clipped the motor leads, um, the orange and the green. Uh, orange is motor plus, green is motor negative, and then we got left track here, right track over there. Those are clipped, and then this cluster of wires in the center here is the common wires for all the lights. So this engine actually has quite a few lights on it. Um, it's, and I'm actually missing one, I just realized, which is uh, this one for the backup light, which I'll have to solder in, in a little bit. But um, we got the um, leads for the cab light, the headlight, um, the firebox flicker and then the ash pan flicker and uh, so those just connect directly to the board but in order to connect the negative um, which for instance there's two lights for the uh, ash pan flicker two for the firebox flicker here um, these have to be connected through a resistor now this is a quarter watt 820 ohm resistor and the way this has worked is you just plug in to one of the function leads in this case it's function three um, and then we will solder these two to the resistor. Since it's LEDs, you only need one resistor per two lights. That's not a big deal. You don't have to put two resistors in there. But then we'll solder these to the resistor, screw this terminal down, and cut the resistor so it's a little bit shorter. And then we'll use that to uh, power the lights. So you, just ha you have to have the resistor in place with the LEDs, otherwise you'll blow them out. All right, so now we've got the tsunami board hooked up, and we're just cutting all the excess wires we don't need. Uh, these go up to those switches in front and that smoke unit, and we are not going to use any of that. So we'll just cut those short so we don't have to deal with them. Get them out of our way, out of our hair. We've got some of that nice wire we aren't going to use. And one more there. Giving the engine a haircut. A wire cut. Yeah. Cut the short and curlies. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> Who invited you? <laughs> I warned you. Next thing is we're actually going to take the speaker, see if we can. I don't know. Looks if it's like going to. Like it's a little too tall. It's going it? to be borderline. Um, we're going to have to take this off to try to squeeze it in, but I think it's going to work. Um, so we'll we'll loosen these and try to slip it under. Well, actually, we'll take it off so we can orient the speaker right, and it'll be easier to wire it that way. Yeah, you know, it looks to me almost like you should be able to just take it off and then put the speaker on there and then screw that down as far as you can, right? Yeah, yeah. I think that might be what we end up doing. Yeah. It seems like it won't rattle or anything because it'll no. be on there tight. I don't think so. We'll, we'll find out. The way we're going to have to do this, actually, this might. The holes line up? No, they don't. Oh, uh, too bad. If we'll you could dual purpose the holes, that would have been good. That would have been pretty good. We could use that double-sided tape to hold that thing in. No, it, it, these will actually lift up. Oh, they're clamps. They're clamps. Oh, and oh those these, are four speakers. These actually yeah, line yeah. up with the clamps. Yeah, it about. it's made for yeah. it. So, a bit of ingen ingenuity by Bachman's design team. Look at that. They did such a great job. Give them a round of applause. Oh, that was more than I was going to give them, but... Yeah, slow clap is what they deserve. Yeah. 
somehow something worked out. Look at that. It is made for it. Hot damn. You even got the right speaker and everything, Kevin. Yeah. You did something right. I someone first. Yeah, someone make notes in the calendar. You did something right. Look at that. That's pretty slick. That's, yeah, that's... Is that little platform going to fit back on there or no? Probably not, but you know what? Double-sided okay. tape. Double-sided tape. Look at that. That's pretty legit. That's pretty legit. I like that. It shouldn't vibrate either, I don't think. No, in theory it shouldn't. Is Look it? That. Look at that. Look at that. That's strong. Yeah. Thank what was that I was saying earlier? Strong like bull. Oh, I thought you were talking about the vibrator. Strong like bull. Oh. <laughs> No, that's not going to Not even close. Oh, well. Another uh, piece of Bachman plastic. Good place for it. Okay. So now, we'll take some of this lovely wire we got. It doesn't really matter what color we use on the speaker. It does, also doesn't matter which one's plus and minus on the speaker. We'll just use green. Why not? We won't get it confused with red and black, the important colors. It's one of the things I've noticed about the smaller scales that I do the sound installs is that they're not polarity sensitive and they just use two brown wires basically yeah. on all of the ones I've done. The decoders even come with the wires for those. Yeah, brown or purple is generally what they use for speakers. There's enough purple in this engine already though. So, in theory, yeah, that'll work out. So we don't have a lot of excess wire hanging around. He's fairly short. So Thanks. Trevor, the mogul advertises itself as plug and play. Would that be... Which mogul? The new Bachman? Yeah, that actually is plug and play. There's an air wire board that plugs into it. Mm -hmm. um, these don't. Sonami doesn't make one that plugs into it. But air wire does. Air wire does. And so like the C19, for instance, that I have. C19 has uh, the plug and play air wire board in it. And the way it works is that there's a, you plug the air wire board in, and that does the motor control and everything, and then you just have a separate sound decoder. So in that case, it has a Phoenix. But there's a board that'll plug into it. So this whole factory light board removal stuff, mm -hmm. you don't have to do any of that. Okay. You just plug in the adapter board, and then the wires already come up with the proper NMRA colors and everything, and they're like, motor plus, and they're already stripped and tinned. So, so that would be plug it fairly the easy then. Yeah, you just plug it into the code. You don't do any wire tracking or anything. Okay. It's easy. And so should be able the other to thing is there's, there's already a speaker in it. <laughs> <laughs> in theory, if you need my help, Bo. Okay. Did you, do you have one of the new mobiles? I do. Oh, you have the Grizzly Flats one, yep. don't you? Okay. Yep. If uh, you need his help and he's already in Willamette, we'll have to make a road trip. Yeah, you, or, or <laughs> you know, worst case, you and I can figure it out because that sounds like it's a little bit simpler than this. <laughs> I've done plug and play on HO. It's really easy. It's plug and play. It is. I did have to wire the speaker though. Oh wow! Well, so that, that was really, really complicated. That was very hard. Okay. Yeah. Very yeah, difficult. that mogul. I got the mogul and the matching coach, which isn't the right scale. The coach? Yeah. No, it's not. I wish Bachman makes some one twentieth scale coaches. Something Maybe. other than Jackson Sharp cars. Maybe they will now. No, they won't. Yeah, because they'll watch the video and they'll be all impressed with your knowledge and they'll say, well, we need to make sure that he's happy. And I'll put it like this, though. It's a much better looking Grizzly Flats coach than the one that Hartland made. Yes, it is. Back. Unfortunately, I don't see Bachman making any 1 to 20.3 new stuff anytime soon. No. Which is sad. The moguls nobody, kind of... nobody in G scale right now is doing anything. No. It's pretty dead right now. Like, there was a time. I don't know if you were in the hobby at this point, but back in the like early mid two thousands, G Scale was coming out with new stuff like constantly. Constantly. I wasn't, but I remember I there was a the reason I got into Garden Road and there was a friend on my street that had a railroad and I went to go work at his railroad. That's how I discovered Garden Railroading. And that's at that time when everything was going on. That was when I remember he went to the train shop and bought a, bought a Bachman two eight oh consolidation brand new. Yeah. That's how long ago it was. Yeah, that, at that time, that's why that closet looks like it does. Mm -hmm. Because at that time, I was in high school, 
and I was very involved in FFA, so I was making money off these hogs I was raising. And I was selling them for like $12 a pound for a 260 pound hog, and I would do like two a year. So I That's had pretty good money, money on that. Pretty good money for a kid, huh? Yeah. And sure. it all went into the train shop. Now I'm just going to paint some flux with the screwdriver onto the... On the terminals, huh? On the terminals, yep. Wow, you use a lot of flux. I know, I probably use more than that. But also, it's there's a ball of hardened flux in there. Yeah. That's I'm pretty sorry, fluxed up. <laughs> yeah, they they keep they keep coming. <laughs> the puns never the pun never ends. <laughs> oh, we should get Paul here. He's pretty punny. He is pretty punny. Yeah. He would have a pun time. <laughs> I like that O gauge layout that you did. Uh, Which the, the the most recent one, the uh, oh over Alameda, in Pleasanton, I yeah. yeah, yeah, it's a nice layout. I never knew that was there. I see, I've seen their HO layout. I didn't know they had O gauge. It's in the same room. Yeah, well, how did I miss that? <laughs> you tell me. I don't know. Maybe you weren't wearing your glasses that day. That could be it. Yeah, yeah. They not only help you see, but they make you smarter. Yep. Well, it's two rail O gauge, isn't it? Yeah. The right type of O-gauge. Yeah. Yeah, it's two rail, and they also have a narrow gauge component at the yep. end that's a, like a logging it's branch. O-N-30 or something? O-N-3. So O-N-3. O-N-3, yeah. yeah. I, I always get those confused. 30 is 30 inch gauge, O-N-3 is 3 foot gauge. Okay. So they could call it O-N-36. O-N-30, though, happens to run on HO track, which is why it's so popular. Mm -hmm. Well, I almost thought about getting an O-N-30 for a little while. It was really close. I, it it runs thing. on standard gauge HO scale track, but the ties look wrong. If you, you got to get the right HO. track. Well, yeah, you, can you, still need you can hand lay your ties, too. There's that. Or you can also use it in hidden places, like if you mm -hmm. have it. Say, That's, what this guy did. Right? That's what this guy did. I was watching on uh, RFD. I don't know if you ever see that. They have the I Love Toy Train show on there. It's, I'm aware of it, yeah. Yeah, yeah it's, well, it's, you, you put your shows on there, don't you? No, my shows are on trains and locomotives. That is RFD TV. It is. Oh, that's right. They have the toy train one on Wednesdays. Yeah, yeah the toy train one is in, it's only a half hour. No, Mondays is trains and locomotives. It's both. It's both. Oh, okay. Yeah. But yeah, yeah I, I, I watch that because every once in a while they show some American Flyer stuff that's cool. Right. And But yeah, this guy did that and he says he in areas where you can't see the track, he cheats and uses regular HO track. Right. Standard gauge HO. So I've soldered the speaker wires on and now... I'm just paying some liquid electrical tape on these connections here that come out of the board uh, where the resistors solder in just in case they were to cross. Um, pretty unlikely because the resistor leads are so short, but the last thing you want is a short to happen. Yep. So be liberal with it. Um, yeah, it doesn't. It, it's good to make sure you have a good coverage so you can be liberal with it. And it doesn't make too much of a mess. It'll dry. Before I start sticking the board down and tucking all the wires in properly. I really want to test it just to make sure that we're not going to get ourselves into a situation where, you know, we have everything reassembled and then all of a sudden it doesn't work. So I right should on. say something that the last time I wired something on in G scale was in the pre DCC days and it was just a standalone Sierra uh, sound unit. Mm -hmm. And uh, when I did the test on that, we had smoke rings coming out of the tender. So, cool. so it wasn't uh, correct wasn't correct. <laughs> it wasn't proper. Yeah. Uh, while we're waiting here, um, might as well, you have this current keeper. That just plugs lovely in the floor, thing, right? Yeah, the lovely thing that's nice about these new Tsunami decoders is Tsunami's current keeper has a plug on it. And it's a tiny little itsy bitsy plug, but um, it will plug directly into the Economy, or sorry, the Tsunami 2 board. Economy is their... Uh, Economic version. Economic version of this. It doesn't have as many sounds. I thought I heard something that they weren't going to be making those because of a shortage in parts or something like that. I think they use the same parts as the salamis, but I'd be really surprised if they use different parts. It sounded like you called it a salami. A, sal a salami. Ooh, some salami does sound good right now. Yeah, I'm getting hungry. Are you hungry? Are you sure hungry? Yeah, I'm hungry. Yeah. But, but we got to finish this, and then we get to have the tri-tip that Kevin promised us. You like tri-tip? I There's, love it. You want to try a tip of this? <laughs> oh. oh no. 
I've been waiting to use that. <laughs> because uh, I've been around, I haven't heard that one before. I, I, I used to work with this guy, this engineer who's from Arkansas, and he's the first person that told me that. <laughs> that's a good one. That's bad. And I, I walked right into it. <sighs> God, that's that's bad. <laughs> Can one of you help me lift this? Because I yeah, want. I'm going to get a clip so we can connect the power to this. Okay, thing. I want to keep the tender separate though. Yeah. Okay. So help me. Are you going to do it? Yeah, I'm going to like help me lift the tender to the other it? side. Yeah, of the yeah, yeah. Yeah, just so up. Uh, yeah. Boom. All right. All right. Well, this should be interesting. Hopefully, you don't have an electrical fire. I'm confident. I'm pretty confident. I mean, you've done enough of these, right? Yeah. In theory. In theory, it's all going to work out just fine. It says here. While we're at it, even though it's not particularly necessary. We'll just put some liquid electrical tape on the speaker connections, because why not? Always better to have some things insulated than... Yeah. It's not necessary. Maybe. No wires are going to be near it, but, you know, just so I don't stay up at night thinking about this engine burning Kevin's house down or something. Outdoor railroad. Burning his yard down? Yes. All right. Well, now we just have to wait for Mr. Hill to get his act together. He might be waiting for a while. Yeah, he's never going to get his act together. <laughs> I'm going to be waiting here for eternity, John. Soon no. John's going to be growing a beard. I'm already growing a beard. I haven't shaved in like three hours now. Yeah, I haven't shaved in a couple days. Look, I even got stubble. See, look at, look at that. that. Zoom in on it. See? Let's see. Can you see it? There's a little bit of stubble going on there. You should have seen when I didn't shave for a week and a half. I was actually starting to grow like a little weird mustache goatee thing. Did you say a weird? Weird mustache goatee thing because it's not, is it wasn't it, all Is way... it a weird instead of a beard or what, how does that No, work? no, it's just weird because it wasn't like all the way full yet. Yeah. yeah. It wasn't, wasn't a manly beard. Well, you're, you're probably lucky that you don't have to shave that often. No, I do. I have to shave every like three to four days. I have to shave every damn day. It sucks. Every single day. Well, I mean, I don't have to. But if I don't, it's like, it's like it's all itchy. It's, really? It's, oh, it sucks. Yeah. Well, you were growing a beard for a while though. Goatee. Well, Goatee. yeah, it was the exactly the half beard. If I grew a full beard, I would, I would just, I'd lose it because I can't. It's this part here because you put your face down on a pillow, right? Um, Unless you sleep on your back all the time, which I don't. But if I put my face down on the pillow and I have a beard, it gets all pushes into my skin and stuff. I hate that. Yeah. That's the whole reason I can't even do it. If I go past like three, four days, that's it. You do look a lot smarter with the glasses. I know. Yeah. It's incredible. What the hell? You can't even figure out how to screw a piece of track. All right, now we need the other end of this. Ready? Ready, go, go ahead. Contact. That didn't sound good. No, that's what it's, it's supposed to do that? Mm -hmm. So, power on. Oh. Hey, hey. Oh, yeah. that sounds good, too, already. Oh, I got a program in engine three, hold on. appears to work. It's going forward when it's supposed to go forward. Hey, Kevin, we did the right thing asking the professional. Yeah. If we would have done this ourselves, the whole thing would be in flames right now. Either that or we'd still be taking the wires out and trying to, well, now where does this go? You know, like two idiots. Yeah. <laughs> okay, let's see if the headlights work. That was the tur uh, turbine. Yeah, well, uh, on this one, it's... Uh, you get both in one. Okay. I'm looking at so the front headlight does not work. I'm looking at the back one. It's not on. Nothing. Hmm. hmm. You hit F zero. Yeah. Hmm. Sounds like troubleshooting time. Yeah. 
Hmm. Curious if. Okay, well, we'll shut it off. Um, right here. Yeah, power. power minus. Oh, no, no. Power okay. minus. Come on. Oh, wait. It's probably the, it's because of the capacitor. Oh, yeah. So it'll turn it off eventually. <laughs> wait, I'm curious, is it? Yeah, it's off. Okay, well, that's how long the capacitor is lasting. Now. That's impressive. No, uh, it said uh, in the thing three minutes. Three minutes of capacitors? Really? No way. That's probably not for G scale, but. There it is. Wow, that's impressive. Yeah. That was going for what, 30 seconds, yeah. a minute? I don't think this thing will have any problem on dirty track. Yeah. All right, well, I'm going to unplug the capacitor so we don't have to deal with this as we're working on it. Yeah, shock ourselves. Yeah, all right. <laughs> you go to... Oh, it's off. Hey! Hey! Hey, caramba! I would not be my first, you know, choice of words, but yeah. <laughs> it's a family program. It's a family program. I works. Well, I guess we're going to have to do some swapping of wires. Hey, hey! We okay, we got our forward light now. So that was obviously the issue. Still nothing backwards, though. Well, no, because I haven't changed the wires. Not that. Oh, I thought you did it already. No. So was the polarity reversed or something? Yeah, the polarity was reversed. That's actually not a bad whistle either. Oh, there's better whistles than that. Bell actually sounds like the Dixie. Listen. Yeah, we'd have to change that ring rate a little bit. Oh, but, you can uh, change that. Okay, well, uh, we'll go. Uh, well, I kind of want to try that Powell whistle on here. I saw they had. Yeah, that it's nice. It's nice. It's a nice whistle. So now what? You gotta hook up the back. Uh, yeah. Well, back? we're gonna we're gonna reconfigure the way it's hooked up, and then in theory, if we just do the back, then that'll solve our issues. But we don't know. Uh, I don't know if the ones for the ash pan flicker were hooked up wrong. Also. We're going to find out. And again, the decoder is still... Yeah, it on. doesn't look like we're flickering down there. No, well, I have, those ones aren't even hooked up right now. Oh, okay. But we just want, I want to make sure that before we repaint liquid electrical tape that those are uh, squared away. We'll, we'll find out. I think those ones are right, um, but... Oh, and we can set this up for geared engine sound. Too. Yes, you can set it up for a three-cylinder chuff. See, that's the problem I have with the the three truck is it set, doesn't sound right because you don't yeah, you have can't that option. Have, you don't have that option. Okay, so now what's this to test the backlight? This is to test the backlight and then the uh, firebox flicker slash ash pan flicker. All right. Did you go on ash pan? Ash pan. Ash pan. Ash pan. Something you have in a hospital. No, that's bed pan. Oh yeah, yeah. Close enough. Yeah. Okay, so we got a headlight. Looks like we got some flicker down there. I'm Hard to tell. Uh, I'm not seeing, not seeing the rear headlight come on. Oh, hold on! I'm still in the power mode. Give me a moment. There we go. There it is. Okay. Okay. So we got that working. Uh, how do you get um, more functions on this? What do you mean? Function 22, 24. For so just hit the number. No, you need. To, oh, it's shift. How do you shift? Isn't there a shift key on there? I thought you run digital tracks at your house. I do, but I don't program no. them. Oh, no. Trevor does. Oh, wait. Function. Function. There's not a function shift, and then it puts a 2 on the screen? No. Function. Nope, that's not it. Yeah, that's the whistle. Good. Thanks, John. Well, option? I, I, option? No, I don't think so. Here. Me. We'll come back when you figure it out. 
<laughs> I got a question for you, Kevin, because you know, you've worked on UP. You're like a real train guy. Yes. But most real train guys aren't foamy like you. What's your excuse? What, what's going on with that? Well, um, I don't know if I'd call it foamy. Uh, what do you? Um, what would you call it? Even uh, I recognize it as foamy, and I don't even care about that stuff. This is an art form, you what? know, modeling. Um, oh, so it's yeah. a creative outlet. Yeah, it's a creative outlet. Yeah. And sometimes, you know, when things aren't going right, the the uh, pissy prototype railroader comes out, and I throw locomotives around and stuff. It's real fun. You throw stuff across the room? Yeah. 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 Well, if you break it, you can always fix it. Or I can call Trevor to come fix it. Is that what happened to this one? You're just not telling us? No, you no. You broke no. it or no? <laughs> <laughs> what about you, Trevor? You're a little bit foamy. Yeah. But you work on the railroad too. I work for a tourist railroad though. Yeah, but what is that's that that just spells foamer in itself. Kind of, huh? Yeah. You liked it so much you had to go work there? Yeah, yeah kind well, of. Uh, it did start out that way, didn't it? Oh, yeah, for sure. Yeah. But I could play a steam engine and get paid. I mean, like, it's pretty cool. Yeah, what's, what, what could be wrong with that? Yeah. So, John, you read the one for the DT402? Yeah, that's okay. what I found on my phone. Okay. The one in Trevor's hands is for the DT400, and it totally skipped over higher functions for the DT400, so... Yeah, maybe it doesn't do it. Oh, wait. These guys are trying to change the whistle now. No, we were programming oh, we weren't that programming that engine. Okay. No. Well, okay, now we we're successfully five. programmed another engine that's not on the track. Perfect. Okay, so program one twenty. And that was with his glasses two. on. Good. Good. Okay, exit. Let me try. Nope. Oh, it oh, works. That's terrible. What's that's that? terrible. Let's not do that. Okay. It sounds like an angry German engine. <laughs> yeah. Ah, yeah, funny. stop that. Oh, I got stuck. It hurts my head. Okay, so. Okay, so it's on that. So 120 to. Yeah, I'll show you my favorite whistle. That's the whistle you'd want if you knew that your neighbor drinks a lot and wakes up with hangovers all the time. <laughs> exactly. Exit. Right? Yeah. That's the one that I have yeah. on the. Uh, it sounds like the Dixie, other than the fact that this is vibrating. All right, so we were noticing that there was a bit of a. What was that? A rattling noise a or distortion or something, right? Mm -hmm. Vibration. In, in the sound when the whistle was being sounded. And basically, what happened then was Trevor took the clips that were holding the speaker in. Uh, off, right? Yeah. And now the sound of the vibration went away. We put double-sided stick tape to hold the speaker. Right. So now, um, the other thing is that it turns out um, these older Digitrax files won't access index CVs, nor will they access 28 functions, apparently. So we cannot turn the firebox lights on, unfortunately, so we can't test that. But the headlight works, the backup light works, and we can program the sound, so it's a good start until we can get something where we can program it better. Right, and as long as you're not running it at night, people wouldn't probably see the flicker anyway, mm -hmm. no. I think. Then we got the, that one. Those are the only two singles. Okay, let's go with that one. Okay. That's pretty cool. Yeah. So I'm curious how in time it is. It's actually pretty close to in time. You can actually hear like the clanking. Yeah. <laughs> so do you like that chuff or do you want a different chuff? Let's experiment. Okay. 
because I haven't heard anything else. Well, yet, now so. we know it's working. I think it's time to put the tender back on. It'll make it easier. Yeah. So yeah, um, let's set the power off real quick. So it looks like you, we have it done enough to to close it back up, eh? Yep. So now something else that I was kind of suggesting was that it seems to me like by having the what is now basically a speaker enclosure, it's going to change the sound a little bit too. It's going to be a lot beefier, a lot deeper sound. See what I mean? You can already tell. Mm -hmm. Try that whistle to see if we didn't lose it. Ah! I heard it. Yeah, I heard it too. Something's there's, vibrating in there. There's a ton of wires in there, is the thing. That sounds really nice. That does. Yeah. So why don't you explain then what you're doing there, Trevor, because okay. we took it back apart, right? Yeah, so I'm putting a piece of foam tape on the speaker to insulate the wires from the speaker so that when we put the uh, engine back together, the wires aren't going to touch the speaker directly because it was rattling pretty bad. So hopefully, in theory, right, this will work. A lot of things work in theory, not in practicality. So we'll see what happens. So the, what prompted this was that there was a little rattle coming off of the speaker when, oh, no. when the whistle, <laughs> well, it was noticeable when the whistle blew. So this is an attempt to solve that problem. That sounds really good, actually. Yeah, it does. It's a lot better, huh? Mm -hmm. Right, now we'll just tighten the screw down then. I'm sure once I tighten the screw down, it's going to start out. Yeah, that's probably the problem. Alright, let's see. Sounds good. Satisfactory. Okay. And we'll just put the end ladder back on. Get the reels this time. Oh my god, is it the end ladder that's rattling? It the, is. The end ladder's rattling. Wow. It's not that terrible, though. You, can you live with that? I mean, I don't think we're going to be able to do anything to fix it, so... Okay. Well, we finished the shake. It's done. Uh, it runs great, seemingly. It sounds pretty good, but either. Sounds great. So I think we better go out onto the San Benito Southern and give it a test. Give it a test. We're going to give it a test run here today? I believe so. It's time for some foamy fun. Time for foamy fun. Foamy fun for everyone. Uh oh.
Uh-oh. Oh, it's like dominoes. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Well, Game over. I that. thought you were the railroader. <laughs> that looked off. Oh, we lost the drive line and the whole <laughs> deal. Domino.